What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com. That's H-A-W-G sports.com. Coming to you from Hog Sports Studio. Today, we're going to break down this basketball coaching situation. Danny West is going to join us a little later. Talk some Razorback recruiting. Of course, we'll answer your questions on spring football. All happening on Hog Sports Live. All right, everybody, let's get a couple of graphics up here real quick. I want to remind everybody you can watch, listen uh, on several different avenues. There's uh, pod, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, there's uh, Spotify. You can w- watch the video on YouTube and, of course, here on Facebook Live, and we always have it on uh, on. Uh, everywhere else I guess so uh, I want to thank everybody for joining me go ahead and start getting some questions in. we're going to ask Danny a few questions uh, so get him some questions lined up if you want to ask questions about this coaching search then go ahead and get those uh, chimed in as well in spring football also go ahead and throw us a thumbs up if you haven't already if you're listening on podcasts throw us five stars give us a rating share with your friends comment of course follow like share all those good things let's jump right into it so Right now on hogsports.com, today only, you can get our, our coaching search hot board, okay? We're not going to have it tomorrow. Things are going to really start heating up with this coaching search coming, coming up this weekend and, and beyond after that. I don't think anything's going to happen anytime soon. So we've got that whole thing broken down for you. Uh, and really to say the main thing that you need to be looking for is Kelvin Sampson. From my sources – Kelvin Sampson is the guy that you need to be watching out for. Um, I've got a very good source to, close to the situation, and he says that a third-party feeler has already been sent out there with Kelvin Sampson, that uh, he definitely thinks that Sampson is the top choice. Now, obviously, he was asked the other day what his opinion is on um, what his opinion is on Arkansas and, and the coaching situation out there, but he's everybody knows how that's going to be answered. Anybody who watched Arrested Development, and if you have, this is a spoiler, but at the end he's talking about there's a sense of obligation and embarrassment. There's a word for it in, in Chinese that Americans don't have, and that's kind of the, the deal. You have to ask that question. You know what the answer is going to be. So um, that's, uh, that's kind of where we are right now. Nothing's going to be decided with Kelvin Sampson until after he's not going to talk business right now while uh while this stuff is going on so um that's where we are right now chris beard a lot of people are asking um you know is chris beard in the mix is arkansas interested in chris beard are you interested in chris beard is is my question are you interested in chris beard of course they're interested in chris beard you saw what the guy did last night Uh, i think arkansas fans are enamored with chris beard based on what he did at little rock going 30 and 5 when arkansas was going 16 and 16. so um of course they're interested there and then really with our hot board i mean there's some names on there that you're going to expect to see buzz williams obviously texas a&m is is really mentioned with him a lot a lot of these coaches are in the sweet 16 right now so we're not going to hear a whole lot, but again, to reiterate what I've heard on Kelvin Sampson, and and we're going to hear some more things as this unfolds. Um, anybody who's been with us at Hog Sports know how we cover a, a coaching situation. Uh, we broke the news of John Pelfrey's dismissal, broke the news of Chad Morris's uh, hire, and really guided you every step of the way with that. And we're going to do that again with basketball. I'm not saying we're going to break the story, but uh, you never know what's going to happen on who breaks the story. He gets the news, but we're going to guide you along the way on hogsports.com right now you can sign up for a dollar for the first month at hogsports.com a dollar i mean you're not going to beat that price it's three cents a day so um let's see if we got any questions built up here already uh, again i'm going to bring danny in here in just a little bit and he's going to answer some of your recruiting questions brandon holly says is the next head coach going to be an awesome recruiter i would hope so you know i think what chad morris and the staff has done has really changed things in terms of how we look at uh, recruiting. You know, um, just think about how often you see stuff with the, you know, the graphics that come out from the graphics department, um, you know, the branding of Arkansas football, uh, them staying ahead in the recruiting game. You know, you see anybody who's on Twitter sees that stuff all the time. Have you seen that with the basketball department? You know, there's all kinds of rumors that they need to improve their relationship with AAU coaches and and programs and things like that. But do you ever see, like, man, Arkansas really got out in front on on that power forward? You know, even with Daniel Gafford, it feels like it feels like they're like, oh man, Daniel's gone. We got to offer some guys, you know. And it, and it's 
not to cut those guys down, but it's not guys that are, you know, super highly recruited. Uh, Danny West has a great breakdown right now. Now, it is a VIP article. Again, you can get it for a month, uh, for a dollar this month. Uh, but he breaks down all the coaching candidates and who some of the top prospects that they're in on, who they've been targeting. I mean, Chris Beard's got a top 15 recruiting class lined up. And Kelvin Sampson's is 60-30. He's kind of on a different um, level, I guess, with Houston. Um, Buzz Williams has a top 25 recruiting class also. So um, that's an interesting article put together by Danny West. But, yes, absolutely, recruiting is – is I thought Fitz Hill made a great point yesterday on Drive Time Sports just talking about recruiting. Um, and uh, so that's obviously very important, and that's going to be a key component with this next coach. My sources also say uh, different sources from the sources uh, with Houston, but sources more in Arkansas uh, are saying that um, Arkansas, if they can generate the interest from the right coach, then yes, they are going to be willing to pay the price to get it in. And um, I mean, it's been 24 years since Arkansas has brought in, you know, has really lived up to fan expectations. That's that's a long time. I mean, if you if you consider, to me, having a great regular season and making some noise in the NCAA tournament, and by that I mean, you know, making it to the second weekend, um, I think that is really the standard. Having a great season, but and by that I mean like 24, 25, 26 wins, something like that in the regular season, and then making it in the tournament. It has been 24 years since that happened. Um, 23 years ago, they made it to the Sweet 16, but they were really the last team to make the NCAA tournament. I think they only won like 18 games or something that year. Uh, so let's get on to the next question. What's your time frame when the coach will be announced? Well, I think it depends on this tournament because I think that you got to hear a no from – Kelvin Sampson, you got to hear a no from Chris Beard, Buzz Williams before you move on, you know. So that's where I think things are right now. Um, and after that, I mean, I've got a few names up there, but really I think it's kind of a, a crapshoot after that. You know, I'm just kind of putting some names out there that, you know, guys that have done some things. Nate Oates was on there before he took the Alabama job. Uh, so, you know, I think it's – after after we get done talking about Sampson and Beard – you know, who knows where they could go exactly, but hopefully we'll be able to find some stuff out if it does get that far. Um, I will say this. I want to I want to say this because there's a lot of rumors and stuff going on about offers that have been made and stuff. Offers don't get made until they are accepted. That is the number one rule in college basketball, college football coaching searches. They don't get offered until they're accepted. So anybody who says that Kelvin Sampson's been offered a contract by Arkansas, and these are the details. I would I would say probably not. J. Mo says, who are we looking at for a replacement? I think I covered that, J. Mo. Keenan Camp says, we have to make a wow hire. Arkansas fans deserve a wow hire. They deserve it. Now, Mike Anderson, I thought, was a wow hire. When you look at what he did at UAB, what he did at Missouri, the unfortunate thing is he really did more for Missouri than he had done at Arkansas in terms of making a, a move. And that's not to discredit some of the fun seasons that Arkansas had with Bobby Portis when they won 27 games and unfortunately ran into North Carolina. And then, of course, winning 26 games with Daryl Macon, Jalen Barford, that crew, Moses Kingsley, when they unfortunately ran into North Carolina, again, who went on to win the national championship. Arkansas got jobbed in that game. I think everybody would agree with me. Like, thumbs up if you agree with that. Brandon Holly says, is there going to be any more players leaving the program? I think that's a distinct possibility. Anytime you have a coaching change, I think that's a possibility. I don't think Keyshawn Embry Simpson's um, decision to transfer really shocked anybody. There's always the potential that he could come back also if he likes the coaching hire as well. Uh, he's not from that far away, being from Oklahoma City. So, um, you know, it, it – it does seem a little premature. I mean, maybe he wants to get in before the early or the late signing period and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know, but um, it does seem a little premature. But for the most part, the guys that have left the program, it's not like they've been a huge different. They've been good players. I mean, Nick Babb's been good at Iowa State. You know, um, Darius Hall looked like he had some potential. But were those guys difference makers, NBA players, or could you go out and get another one most likely? I think you could go out and get another guy like that. The guys that are hard to replace are, are Daniel Gaffords, Bobby Portis types. Brandon Holly uh, mentioned that. Brandon just answered your question. Patrick Griffin says, who is it going to be? We'll see. Nobody knows right now. It, the way this will break down, the way this will happen, the way Chad Morris happened, when I found out two days before it was announced and really about a day before everybody started latching onto it, um, that was 
that was a rarity, I think, uh, for me to have found out that early. The way it usually goes is you find out about an hour or two before, maybe a little bit earlier. So that's that's kind of how this will happen. Uh, of course, we'll guide you with the way, the, you know, with the whole thing. Right now, my sources are saying it's more likely that Kelvin Sampson stays at Houston than goes to Arkansas. Yesterday, uh, or day before yesterday, he told me 60-40. Today, he, or last night, he told me, and this is, again, he's, he's close to the situation, maybe a little bit more uh, than 60-40 in favor of him staying at Houston. But he's not going to do any business until after. And that's what you'd expect to hear right now. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing to hear 40%. But uh, my source does believe that Kelvin Sampson is candidate A, candidate 1A. Clinton Stacy Patterson says, yes, Patino. Uh, probably not. <laughs> He's involved in litigation right now. Uh, Felton Mitchell says, any word on Tron Folsom? We talked to Danny the other day, and Danny said there hasn't been a lot of movement with Tron Folsom as of now. Uh, we'll see if he's got anything else on that uh, when we check in with him with a minute in a, in a little bit. Um, Matt Hart says, Billy Donovan. The last thing I remember about Billy Donovan saying about Arkansas was basically like, who does Arkansas think they are? <laughs> I mean, firing John Pelfrey, which was absolutely justified. Um but who knows, a lot a lot of water under the bridge maybe after eight years. Donovan would actually be a, a home run hire. Thad Mata is the name that's come up. Thad Mata. So just to go over Thad Mata, Mata is a guy that um, had to step down from Ohio State for health reasons. We all know that. And the health reasons is, is basically he had a botched back surgery that left his – I, don't, I can't remember if it was like a, a little bit of paralysis or something with his foot, but he had to wear a brace and he had to sit on a, on a stool, uh, you know, on the bench. Uh, so, that, you know, you watch the last four seasons or so, there's kind of a steady decline with Ohio State kind of affecting his recruiting and his ability to coach the team. So a couple of years off, the word that we've heard is that he's feeling a lot better, a lot healthier. It's done him well uh, to take some time off. He's only 51 years old. This is a guy who has, an, I mean, an incredible coaching record. Been to uh, one fi two Final Fours, uh, a couple of Elite Eights, one Elite Eight with Xavier. Uh, so that Mata, maybe not uh, a bad guy to keep your eye on if he's willing to get back into coaching. Like I say, he's only 51. If his health is back, uh, I'm sure he would like to get back into coaching. I would think that would be kind of a, a home run type of hire. Um, okay, why can't I not go up here? I'm losing some um, some of the comments here. Do you think Steve Lavin would be interested? I don't know about Steve Lavin. I don't know if that. I, I don't know if it's. I, I I mean it's possible, but I don't I don't know. I'm starting to lose some of the comments. I don't know why. We've gotten so many of them on here. Uh, a little late to the party. What are the chances of Samson coming here? Uh, my source says 60-40 against, Ar uh, against Arkansas in favor and staying at Houston very early in the process. Where are we in relationship of commitments so, so far? Why am I losing comments so far from this time last year? Um, last year they, they started jumping in a little bit sooner. Um, so last year – I would say they're just a little bit behind. They only have three commitments right now. Zevion Capers. Um, was Zevion the last one? No, no, Jashad Stewart was the last one. Uh, so they've got uh, three commitments right now. And uh, there are some guys that have set up official visits. Danny's got a nice breakdown of guys that are about to uh, take visits to Arkansas. So I'm going to see if I can get these comments straightened out because I'm losing comments one after another here. Okay, I think I've got it. Coach Nolan Richardson gave Sampson a glowing endorsement. Yes, he did. I mean, Sampson, you look at his record, uh, outstanding job at Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma doesn't have a tremendous basketball tradition. I would say he's probably been the best, as far as my limited knowledge of Oklahoma is, he's the best coach Oklahoma ever had. At Indiana, he did an exceptional job uh, in two years. I think he was like 24-5 and five or something when he, when he had gotten fired. So, uh, really, when you – look at what he's done and and i've seen so many people bring up his ncaa stuff and what are we really talking about here we're talking about the phone calls right we're talking about making phone calls and he got a five-year show cause something that is legal now i mean actually not being completely forthright with the ncaa is probably more likely what got him uh, in that situation uh logan houston wants to know about muscle may a long shot but worth it yeah i think i think he's a uh, definitely a candidate to be in the mix i mean this guy that got nba experience fred hoiberg is another guy with nba experience a lot of people talking about him with nebraska uh so people like that comment i guess about the uh about making phone calls phone calls 
That's what we're talking about. Not paying players, phone calls. I'm talking about phone calls. Uh, Brady Board wants to say, makes sense. I, I don't know why I'm losing comments, guys, but I am. They're like running off faster than I can look at them. So I apologize. Beelan ain't leaving Michigan. Uh, no, I don't know who said that. Um, I mean, when you look at some of the guys out there, some of the hotter names on on big on the big level, I guess you could say that, you know, is Texas Tech a good as good a job as Arkansas from a resources standpoint, facilities, uh, historical? No, I mean, it's Houston. It's been a long time since Fast Lane Jamma. Um, those guys have built great programs there, but uh, in reality, you know, Arkansas. Somebody, somebody was asking me, is like, is Arkansas really a better job? And when you consider the fan support, the number of fans that show up to games in Fayetteville, not the ticket scan number, but the actual number of fans that are showing up, Bud Walton Arena itself, the Basketball Palace of Mid-America, fantastic facility, the new Basketball Operations Center that's brand spanking new. There's good basketball in Arkansas. You can recruit Arkansas and do very well. I mean, look at some of the players that have come out of here over the years. You're very close to Memphis, though. Penny Hardaway's kind of locking that area down, but there, you can still get into Memphis. Um, there are plenty of other areas. Texas isn't far away. Oklahoma produces some good talent. You can win at Arkansas, okay? There's no doubt you can win at Arkansas. You just have to have relationships and recruiting and be forward thinking. I think that was a little thing that kind of got away from Mike, didn't embrace social media. You know, I'm not in love with Twitter, but I have to do it. I have to be on Twitter or I'm going to get left behind. Um, so that's something that I, I felt like Mike could have done a better job at. Maybe his staff could have done a better job at. Again, I'm losing, I'm losing these comments faster than I can get to them, guys. I apologize. We've got almost 300 people on here right now, which I think is a record. Um, Bradley Board says Samson got in trouble for something that is, that is in violation now. Yes. Uh, possible NBA coach come and heard rumors. Um, I guess maybe you're talking about Billy Donovan. Those are the rumors that are going around. Throw the bank at Chris Beard. I think they will. I think they're going to throw money at the guy if it's the right guy. And that's what Arkansas deserves. Here's the deal. In the SEC, top to bottom, $3 million to $2 million. That's what coaches get paid in the SEC. If you want to play with the big boys – Kentucky, Kansas, those coaches are getting seven million dollars. But if you want to be, you know, in the discussion, I think you got to go over three million dollars a year. The rumors right now on Kelvin Sampson is what six years, eighteen millions, at three million dollars a year. Will Houston go up if Arkansas comes with something like five or something like that? So, Mike Sullivan says if we need five recruits that will stay until they are seniors, that's I know that's ideal, you know, but. In this day and age, 40% of players are transferring out. It's just the reality of it. But I do think that they've established a nice base, even though they've lost, um, even though they have lost uh, Keyshawn Embry Simpson. But when you look at, um, you know, Isaiah Joe and some of the young players that they brought in who are sophomores, Mason Jones, and um, you know some of those guys, I think they have a pretty good base. Desi Seals also. Uh, they just need to get some big time guys in there. You know, I think Joe has a chance to be big time. He's 167 pounds, needs to add some weight. Uh, Shaka Smart, or however you sell it, no. I mean, look at look at what Texas has done. Texas fired Rick Barnes, okay? He's done an amazing job at Tennessee, and they fired him after 17 seasons at Texas. I don't think they feel very smart right now. Greg Marshall was told he already makes too much. He makes $3.5 million. Other people have tried to make runs at Greg, at Greg Marshall, and, and I don't know, it seems like he, he kind of wants to stay there, Sean. All right, I'm going to, and I'm sorry I'm missing people's comments. we got so many comments going right now. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and bring in Danny West, okay? And we're going to change everything to recruiting a little bit. We'll still answer, we'll still answer your questions on basketball, of course. We'll still answer your questions on, um, on football. But we're going we're gonna to flip the page a little bit to recruiting, bring Danny in. He's probably got some takes on basketball as well. Uh, again, I want to remind everybody, if you haven't thrown us a thumbs up, go ahead and do that right now. Throw us a thumbs up if you're listening on podcasts five stars, review us, subscribe to the page. And um, at hogsports.com, i got to mention it again, it's a dollar right now. You can follow all the latest recruiting. There's a lot of stuff coming up with visitors coming up starting this weekend. So, so much stuff going on there. This coaching surf is going to be really fun. We love covering coaching searches. A lot of fun for for our subscribers. Just ask anybody um, and and you just pay a dollar for the first month. So, you can try us out and then move on from there. So, I'm going to get to Danny West right now. We're going to bring him in. Danny, Danny. Oops, speak up. Of... 
Hold on, Danny. Technical difficulties here. I don't know why I can't get you on speakerphone. Sorry, guys. All right, Danny, we got 300 people on here right now, which I think is a record. All right, sorry about that. Danny West joining us here now. And, Danny, first I want to get your take on Arkansas's coaching search. What kind of coach does Arkansas deserve? A uh, big-name coach, I would say, at this point. I mean, I think the demand is there, the, uh, the opportunities there. You know, I, I've seen some comments this week of people talking about Arkansas's, uh, you know, the recruiting uh, opportunity here in Arkansas. I think it's much better than people realize. You know, uh, mm -hmm. some national pundits out there have, have said, well, it's not a very fertile recruiting. I think it is. I mean, you look at some of the players that have come through here, that 2020 class is the next great one. You're, you know, Chris Moore and yeah. all those guys, Devontae Davis, who obviously is – Danny, these national pundits Oklahoma don't State, know but... a damn thing about Arkansas. They don't. <laughs> I, I get so sick of people listening. When Man, when Bielema got fired, man – you had all those people yeah. on there talking about or some places need to understand who they are and what they're capable of. I mean, that made me so mad. I remember I was I was driving when I'm not going to mention him because I like him and I just it just ticked me off. I was driving. I pulled over to the side of the road and tweeted out. Uh, you know, I was so sick and tired of people who have no connection to this state and have the strongest <laughs> opinion on what Arkansas is capable of, who what Arkansas should be appreciative of and you know i can't remember what all i said but i mean i was just it just it burns me up because what should you what should you appreciate winning four games winning one game in the sec a 17 game losing streak in the sec and that kind of stuff ticks me off when these national guys get on there and act like they have a clue what's going on with arkansas and to be honest with you national guys are spread too thin you know they they, they know a little bit about everything but they don't know enough about arkansas to be making comments like that Takes me off. Is there is is there anybody on ESPN that you didn't bury during that time? You went after Dari. Yeah, Marcus. Spears. I said I wasn't going to say him. I like Dari Noka. <laughs> oh, I do too. Everybody likes him. Yeah. but you're right. You're right. They were wrong. I think I mean, he realized that he. Opinion. I think he realized that he was wrong. You know, he came out yeah. with a tweet afterwards saying, "You he know, did. yeah, he sure did." That's right. But anyway, back to your question yeah, before I set you off there. Um, yeah, I'm with you, man. I think they deserve – it's time. You know, it's time to get that thing back. But people have no idea the demand for that program. People are so sick of it, man. I go down here to the gas station, get a cup of coffee, and, I mean, the lady is in there crying. The owner of the store is crying, mm -hmm. talking about, you know, how far the program has fallen. And she loved Mike, but she knew it was time for him to go, too. People are nuts about basketball yeah. here. People have no idea. Let me ask Let me ask you this, Danny. I want to ask the, the, the people who are on right now. If Arkansas was willing to go out and pay money for a big-time coach, okay, if they're willing to go out and pay money for a big-time coach, are you willing – to preemptively support that coach? Are you willing to pay more on ticket prices? Are you willing to show up to the games? Are you willing to drive from West Memphis like you used to do in the 90s? Because I know you're out there. I know there are people out there who used to come to every single game from West Memphis, and it was a different era then. But let's talk about Kansas real quick, Danny, because your wife has connections to Kansas. How much is a ticket to Kansas? It's a lot. It's a lot <laughs> more than Arkansas. Yeah. Their coach has a $7 million you. price tag. Their coach has a $7 million price tag. So – it's a lot more to go to those games. If you want to get back, Dude, are you willing to, as a fan, to take that next step with the program taking the next step? On that note, and not to compare the two because they're you know they're different, um, different places, different everything. But I do remember going to like a game against Cornell. I took my wife, got her like anniversary tickets, and we paid like a hundred and fifty bucks a pop for tickets, mm -hmm. and we were nosebleed in yep. that place so i can imagine i mean you do have to pay yeah. you know if you want to be a big dog you got to pay and i know people hate hearing that but to your point i do think they're willing to do it if it means the right guy i sure yep. do well my sources have told me that if it's the right guy then they're willing to open up the the pocketbook i mean basketball brings in a pretty good bit of money the sec makes a lot of money you know um yeah. That's one reason I think Vanderbilt doesn't have an excuse for the facilities that they have right now. Uh, all right, Danny, the, I don't. I've never experienced this, but we've had so many comments that they're rolling off. I can't get to them. Like some of That's the comments. It's a good problem. We got 271 people on right now. 
Um, people ask me about Tubby Smith. I, I think that's that's past. This is a cry face, laugh face. Um, any more players leaving? Will we be interesting? Will be interesting to see who how he brings recruits. You had you had an interesting article. What are your What are your thoughts on recruiting for basketball? Um, you just kind of you know break down. I didn't give away the whole the horse there on that, but just kind of break down maybe the recruiting prowess of some of these candidates. Yeah, I mean nothing that really blows you away. But of course, you know the candidates you're talking about are at Texas Tech and, and Houston. Yeah, well, I, I, mean? I like so, the uh, yeah. the top what top fourteen, top fifteen recruiting class Chris Beard has put together, sure. right? That's Absolutely, at, at Texas he's, Tech, he's done a really good yeah. job. And, and much of that is it comes down to one player, and you have to for, forgive me, I don't remember the kid's name, but he does have a four star yeah. guy committed to him. That's really tough. You've been to Lubbock. I visited out there several years ago. There, it's a tough place to recruit yeah. to. Well, he also, and, Danny, doesn't you know, he have the number one ranked junior college power forward in the country too? I mean, there yeah, there's yeah. possibilities that you know whoever is hired could bring players with them, and Arkansas certainly needs players right now. I mean, there's no question. They need about bigs. That. They yeah. need bigs. That's yeah. as much an important yeah. thing about this process as anything. Who can you bring with That's you? It. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you're looking at it right now. If you don't have a guy that's bringing somebody in, a big man for next year, it doesn't matter who you hire. Next year is probably going to be pretty rough, yeah. right? Do next year, I think was going to, I think it was going to be kind of rough either way with a new coach yeah, and with Mike, too. and that's the reason that I there's a too. change. You can have it. You can have a rebuild year. Sure, you can't have two. That's right. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I forget where I was going with that, but you know, for people thinking that it's going to be an, uh, you know, an overnight change and suddenly Chris Beard or Kelvin Sampson or whoever is just going to show up, get you to the Sweet 16 next year. I think that uh, don't be misled there. Uh, mm-hmm. People look at Auburn right now and the turnaround Bruce Pearl has had down there. He was like 34 and 44 in his first three years there. People forget that. Uh, Rick Barnes uh, at Tennessee, it took him three years to really turn it around there. So mm-hmm. it could take a few years. Yeah, it could. I, I think that um... – I don't think it takes maybe three years. Here's here's the thing that I've learned as we have – I've been covering Razorbacks for 16 years, and what I've learned is there's always the sentiment among football coaches that it takes four years to rebuild a program. And with basketball coaches, it takes three years to rebuild a program. But let me tell you something. The great coaches, they get it done in three. The great coaches make That's a true. turnaround in three years in football and a couple of years in basketball. And really, Mike, his third year, they won 22 games. In this day and age, 22 games from the SEC gets you in the NCAA tournament, but it was a different league back then. It wasn't enough. I mean, sure. Arkansas – or SEC was getting two or three teams in the NCAA tournament. It was kind of a joke. Uh, but uh, what, we were, what we were talking about was recruiting, Danny. I think you, kind of, you pretty much covered that. Um, let's switch the – turn the script real quick to football recruiting because there is a nice group coming in this weekend, and you've kind of outlined the next few weekends about the prospects who are coming in so far. Yeah, we've got an article on that, kind of listing all the guys. Um, as far as tomorrow, we'll just jump into that because that's the next thing. Up. Yes. But you've got some really good good guys coming in tomorrow. Uh, defensive lineman out of Antioch, Tennessee. Michael Reese is a guy that they offered a few weeks ago, already mm-hmm. getting him on campus, as well as uh, Patrick Jenkins, a kid out of uh, John Eric High School down in Louisiana, another defensive lineman that they offered about the same time as Michael Reese a few weeks ago. And then Jabari Small is a name we're familiar with. They've been on Jabari for a long time now. Really an interesting guy. I mean, his, his father was an all-SEC wide receiver. Uh, two of his uncles were also wide receivers, all-SEC selections. Mm-hmm. So this is a guy, you know, he's got some good offers, but – in my opinion, he's still kind of being overlooked to an extent, you know. So keep an eye on Jabari. Uh, Catrell Wallace from uh, right there in Bryant is, is coming up this weekend. There's a couple more guys. Dylan Johnson out of Mississippi is a four-star running back. He'll be here. Johnny Wilson, a kid from KC, Park Hill High School in Kansas City, mm-hmm. defensive end. He, he's heavily recruited as well. So uh, shaping up to be a pretty busy day tomorrow. Yeah. And I guess on basketball recruiting, we can pretty much just um, yeah, throw everything kind of we knew uh, out the, the door. Uh, yeah, everything's changing. Yeah. All right, Danny, appreciate you joining us, man. You got it, buddy. All right, talk to you later. All right, that was Danny West with hogsports.com. Danny West, the best recruiting guy in the country. Uh, in the con- Nobody brings it like Danny does. He's a workaholic, um, uh, does a great job. That's one of the things that you get 
with hogsports.com, late break recruiting news uh, from a guy like Danny West who who works tirelessly for you. Um, okay, guys, I'm going to start wrapping things up here. I want to remind everybody again, if you're listening on podcast, uh, if you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook Live, throw us that thumbs up. Give us five stars. Subscribe to the channel. If you like this kind of content, share with people. Make sure you're following the page also. Um, and I have here, as you can see, Facebook Live, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, many ways to watch, many ways to listen. Of course, we always upload it to hogsports.com for our subscribers. And right now, it's a dollar a month, a dollar for the first month, I should say. So you can sign up for hogsports.com. The first month, it's a dollar. I mean, you're not going to beat that. It's three cents a day. You're going to be able to follow this coaching search. We're just doing this hot board and this discussion right here live uh, today. We're going to we're going to move on past this. It's more of our VIP type of stuff along with the recruiting stuff. And uh, so you can sign up right now for a dollar. Go to HAWGsports.com uh, for that. No promo code needed. Or you can sign up for a year and get 30% off your first year. So uh, I want to thank Danny West for joining us. I want to thank everybody for their comments, for joining the show. And um, – that's pretty much a wrap. So I hope you enjoyed it today. Again, uh, do all the things that I said if you, if you like the content that you're getting. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com. We'll catch you next time.